The Milky Way galaxy's outer spiral arm is where our solar system is situated. The Sun, our star, and everything gravitationally connected to it, including the planets Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, dwarf planets like Pluto, dozens of moons, and millions of asteroids, comets, and meteoroids, make up our solar system. The night sky contains more planets than stars outside of our own solar system. The Milky Way has thousands of planetary systems orbiting other stars, and new planets are continually being identified. The Milky Way is only one of maybe 100 billion galaxies in the cosmos, and most of the hundreds of billions of stars in it are believed to have their own planets. While our planet is in some respects only a tiny dot in the vast cosmos, we are not alone in the universe. We appear to dwell in a cosmos that is teeming with planets, a web of uncountable stars and families of objects, some of which may even have life of their own. The universe is full of planetary systems with planets orbiting host stars, much like our own. Because we refer to anything connected to our star by the adjective solar, which comes from the Latin word solis, our planetary system is known as the solar system. There are many more planets in our solar system than just the eight that revolve around the sun. The Kuiper Belt, which is located beyond Neptune's orbit, is also a part of the solar system. This is a sparsely populated ring of frozen bodies, almost all of which are smaller than the dwarf planet Pluto, the most well-known Kuiper Belt item. The Oort Cloud lies beyond the Kuiper Belt's periphery. Our solar system is enclosed in this enormous spherical shell. It has never been directly detected, but based on mathematical simulations and observations of comets that most likely originate there, its existence is predicted. The Oort cloud is made up of ice space debris, some of which are larger than mountains, orbiting our sun at a distance of up to 1.6 light years. The thickness of this material shell ranges from 5,000 to 100,000 astronomical units. The distance between the Sun and Earth, or one astronomical unit, is approximately 93 million miles or 150 million kilometers. The Oort cloud is the limit of the Sun's gravitational pull, where objects in orbit can reorient and go back toward our solar. The heliosphere of the Sun does not reach quite as far. The solar wind, a stream of electrically charged gas moving outward from the Sun in all directions, forms the bubble known as the heliosphere. The termination shock is the border where the solar wind is dramatically slowed by pressure from interstellar gases. Between 80 and 100 astronomical units, this edge occurs. The termination shock has been overcome by two NASA spacecraft that were launched in 1977, Voyager 1 in 2004 and Voyager 2 in 2007. In 2012, Voyager 1 entered interstellar space, and in 2018, Voyager 2 followed. But, it will be a very long time until the two voyagers leave the Oort cloud. In our solar system, there are more than 200 known moons, and there are likely many more that have not yet been identified. Mercury and Venus are the only two planets without moons out of the eight. The largest planets in our solar system by moon count are Jupiter and Saturn. The swarms of moons surrounding these worlds resembled miniature versions of our solar system in certain ways. Pluto, which is smaller than our own moon, has five moons in its orbit, including the enormous Charon. Pluto sways due to Charon's size. Moons can exist on even small asteroids. In 2017, researchers discovered the asteroid 3122 Florence had two very small moons. About 4.5 billion years ago, a dense cloud of interstellar gas and dust gave rise to our solar system. The supernova shockwave from a nearby exploding star, or supernova, may have caused the cloud to collapse. This dust cloud burst into a spinning disk of material known as a solar nebula when it disintegrated. Gravity drew more and more material toward the center. At some point, the pressure inside the core became so intense that hydrogen atoms started to combine to produce helium, releasing a huge quantity of energy in the process. That was the birth of our sun, which eventually accumulated more than 99% of the available matter. Moreover, material further out in the disk was clumping. These groups collided with one another, growing bigger and bigger. Several of them became large enough to be shaped into spheres by gravity, creating planets, dwarf planets, and huge moons. In some instances, planets did not develop. 
For example, the asteroid belt is composed of fragments of the early solar system that were unable to fully coalesce into planets. Asteroids, comets, meteoroids, and small, atypical moons were created from smaller remaining fragments. The way the solar system developed is what gave the planets and other celestial objects in our solar system their specific positions and configurations. When the solar system was young, only stony material could resist the heat closest to the sun. The first four planets are terrestrial planets since they are Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. They all have rocky, flat, and tiny surfaces. In the meantime, substances that we are accustomed to viewing as ice, liquid, or gas settled in the solar system's outermost regions. The ice giants Uranus and Neptune, as well as the gas giants Jupiter and Saturn, were brought together by gravity.